I guess I ultimately think we need to reach the point where not just a few of our nation's leaders, but but many, many, many of them understand what you understand after you've taught successfully in a low income community, which is a couple of things. One, it's just you understand we can solve the problem because once you realize that, then you realize we have to prioritize the issue and and work relentlessly to, to actually reach the goal of solving the problem. The other thing is, I, I think you come out of, of this experience of teaching successfully, rejecting any silver bullet theory. So you come in and you think it's funding or it's maybe technology or it's it's a curricular approach or whatever. And, and many people in our country are still searching for the silver bullet. You come out of this realizing, okay, it's it's no one thing. It is everything. You know, there are no shortcuts to quote a crew of our folks who've started these very high performing charter schools, the KIPP academies. Um, it's about it's about doing everything well, just as in the same way that success in any other sector, we always know in business and government, and whatever, it's about doing everything well, you know. And, and I think that is a fundamental difference. So when I think about, for example, what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now, where, um, you know, a very courageous mayor assumed responsibility for the school system and appointed Michelle Rhee, who's a Teach for America alum, uh, to run the school system. You know, the majority of her senior team are Teach for America alums, a growing percentage of the school principals, 10% and growing, uh, including the principals of the fastest improving and, and highest performing schools are Teach for America alums. And what unites that crew is, is those two things. Like, they, they are working with a level of conviction and a level of relentlessness that is hard to find. Um, uh, and at, at the same time, you know, they've put all the all the basics at the at the center of their agenda so knowing that it's not any one curriculum or it's not any one like there's no magic solution out there they've said you know what most fundamentally this is about people so we need to do everything we can to ensure that we have the most talented teachers the most talented principals the most talented school district officials they've put that at the center of their agenda they believe that those folks need to hold themselves accountable for results and continuously improve over time i mean it sounds mundane but that is the name of the game you know and and so i guess what what inspires me to your question around scale is Realizing that every person in that picture and, and all of the Teach for America alums in various other communities where, there's, where they're at the center of real momentum around reform really came into Teach for America in the 90s, our first decade, when in the whole decade we produced 3,500 Teach for America alums. So the fact that we're at the point now where, you know, well over, we'll, we'll bring in 4,000 core members this year alone. Um, and I just think, gosh, you know, what will we be talking about five and ten years from now? I really believe we're going to reach a point where we have a critical mass of, of leaders working from within education and also, really importantly, from outside of education as well. Um, because as, as much as we'll never solve the problem without long-term, committed, sustained leadership from within, we'll never solve the problem if we don't have a policy context and, and a, a kind of, I mean, Think about the influence of our journalists and of our business leaders. If we don't have folks in influence in, in other sectors who also share a deep understanding of the problem and, and of the solutions. Mm -hmm.